Why did you choose Jamie, your friend? He was the easiest out of anybody because he would have followed me because we're such good friends. Uh, why did you make the suggestion to Jamie to go inside the school today? Um, I was planning to murder him. Do you know why you were going to do this? No, I don't. This is Michael Hernandez. On 3rd February 2004, he lured his classmate and somebody who considered him as a friend, Jamie Guff, into the school bathroom and murdered him in cold blood. This is footage from the interrogation with him and the detective shortly after he committed the murder. Students gathered outside of the school to meet up with friends, socialize, and wait for the doors to open at 8.50 a.m. No one thought much of it when two particular students weren't at their usual meeting spot by the teacher's parking lot that morning. The doors opened and students flooded inside. Before classes started, a student decided to make a pit stop to the boys' bathroom on the second floor of the school. He couldn't have known just how traumatic this decision would turn out to be. Upon entering, another student whom he didn't recognize calmly walked past him and exited the restroom. He observed a single black book bag sitting near the entrance of the bathroom and specks of blood dotting the floor. He peeked underneath the stalls to see if there was anybody inside. There was indeed someone else in the bathroom, but something was terribly wrong. A large pool of blood was forming on the floor inside one of the stalls, and there appeared to be a pair of feet hanging down from the toilet. He swiftly exited the bathroom to advise a nearby security guard that there appeared to be somebody bleeding inside the boy's bathroom. The guard simply brushed him off and told him to go to class. He then went and told a friend what he'd seen. Together, the two boys proceeded back into the bathroom. The stench of warm blood had begun to fill the small latrine. The pair tiptoed cautiously towards the stall. They knew they had to look inside. They prepared themselves for the worst, then hesitantly inched the stall door open. The scene before them could only be described as nightmarish. A male student later identified as 14-year-old Paimigov was covered in blood and unresponsive. He was positioned face down, his chest and torso lying across the toilet seat, while his head and legs hung limply over the sides of it. Blood streamed down his face and into a large pool that was forming on the floor beneath his head. In that pool lay a lone pair of black glasses. One of the boys shouted to the victim twice. When they got no reply, shock turned into panic. The two fled the bathroom in hysterics, startling the security guard in the hallway. This time alarmed by the student's clear distress, the guard rushed into the boy's bathroom. Upon witnessing the scene, he immediately radioed the Miami-Dade Police Department. The guard then left the bathroom to retrieve the assistant principal. Upon returning, the guard discovered that in the few minutes he'd been absent from the bathroom, someone had come in and removed the victim's body from the toilet. The body was now lying face up on the stall floor, his arms spread out to the sides. School personnel could now clearly see that one side of his neck was shredded to pieces. The school was immediately put on lockdown. A few hours later, investigators entered the classroom of eighth grade student Michael Hernandez, who'd been identified by one of the two witnesses as the boy they'd seen exit the bathroom that morning. Michael's teacher approached detectives first with a few pieces of interesting information. She stated that she let her students into the classroom at 8.55 a.m. And since that time, Michael had requested to go to the bathroom three times. The teacher observed that Michael had blood on his shirt, which he attributed to a nosebleed. He made two trips to the bathroom before 9 a.m. Ready? Yeah. Please raise your right hand with us for you, man. You swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, the whole truth. Yes, I do. Mike, just do me a favor. When you talk, talk clearly so that uh, Ms. Renee can understand you, okay? Um, for the record, um, could you please state your name? Michael Hernandez. Mike, what's your birth date? Uh, February 2nd, 1990. Happy birthday. Thank you. So you just turned 14? Yes, I did. Very good. And what grade are you in? I'm in the eighth grade. With his eyes keenly fixed on the detective, his body language conveys respect and a willingness to be compliant. However, we'll soon see that his motives are actually much darker. Uh, what school do you go to? Southwood Middle School. 
And uh, are you in any special classes or anything? Any honors classes? I'm in gifted. All, gifted. My, all my classes are gifted except for my electives. Very good. Um, you can read and write the English language, correct? Yes, I can. And what are your grades in school like? I'm um, A's and B's. Michael appears proud to talk about his exceptional performance in school. Do you know an individual by the name of um, Jaime or Jamie Goff? Yes, I do. And how, how do you know Jamie? Um, we've been friends since the seventh grade. And for the record, Jamie is the victim in this case. How old is Jamie? Fourteen. And you're you're 14 also. Yes. How much older is he than you? Um, I'd say about four months. 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 North of the parking lot. And why is that? Um, that's just where we, me and some other people would just hang out. And this would be before class? Yes, before class. And who are the people that you would hang out with in the uh, morning? Um, most of the time it'd be with um, Jamie Goff, Andre Martin, and myself. And sometimes there were some other people, but they didn't hang out with us. They just were there. Okay. Today, yes. who did you meet at the fence? I met at Jamie Goff. And how did Jamie seem this morning? He seemed like he normal hall, as he does every morning. Did you make any suggestions to Jamie that you and him go into the school early this morning? Yes, I did. And um about what time was that that you suggested that both of you go inside? A little after 8.30, maybe like 8.31 or 35, between those times. What time does school open and are, are students allowed inside the school? 8.50. Did Jamie agree to your suggestion to go inside when you made that to him? We had to make a deal first because he didn't want to get in trouble because we, we've gotten in trouble on previous times when we've attempted to go up there. And why do you get in trouble for attempting to go inside the school? Because it's too early and we're not, we shouldn't be walking around upstairs. And I see. Uh, why did you make the suggestion to Jamie to go inside the school today? Um, I was planning to murder him. Michael answers this question just as matter-of-factly as he has answered all the previous questions without a hint of empathy or remorse. Do you... Do you know why you were going to do this? No, I don't. Now, what was your plan? How were you going to accomplish this i was going to get him into a stall the last stall because it's the biggest so i have more room now this is in a restroom this is the restroom on which floor second floor okay and it's the male restroom yes it is where is it near it is near the media center and the gifted his gifted u.s history class okay and once you brought uh or got jamie in there how are you going to bring him or uh lure him into the restroom we usually go to the restroom after we get upstairs so we don't get caught by security okay and so that so i knew that was going to work i got him into the stall by saying look i have someone to show you so i got him into the stall and i told him to turn around because i wanted to be a surprise before that I put on the gloves he saw me put on the gloves and i said all oh, that going too fast. and i said i like them because they're comfortable now, you also said that you put on gloves. What kind of gloves were these? They were latex gloves. Where did you get them from? My, mo my mother purchased them at Walgreens the previous night. Why did she purchase these? Was, they, was that at your request? It was at my request because I said that I needed them for extra credit for my science class. Now, you and him are already in the stall, correct? Yes, yes. Did he go into the stall first? Yes. Did you follow him? Yes, I did. 
Did you close the stall door? Yes, I did. Now, what transpired next? Okay, I, t I was talking to him and I told him, all right, now, I'm not, now, I have to put my hand over your mouth. Okay. And so I did, and I lifted his neck up. Now, was he facing you or was he away from he you? He was away from me. Did you put your hand over his mouth? Yes, I did. And which hand did you use to put over his mouth? My left hand. Once you did that, what happened next? I had already got, before I did the, before I put my hand over his mouth, I already put my knife out. So the blade was already out. Now, where had you kept this blade? I had kept it in my jacket pocket. And what color jacket did you have on today? I had a red jacket. Now, is this the same clothing that you're wearing? Yes. And what did you do next? I took the knife out and I proceeded to slit his throat. Now, do you remember in which direction you slit his throat? Left to right. Michael is able to recall the details of the murder extremely well, even noting the direction in which he slit his friend's throat. This is significant because it indicates that Michael didn't dissociate at all during the act. Some offenders black out while committing a particularly heinous crime due to the extreme stress of the situation. Michael, however, was keenly aware of exactly what he was doing, from beginning to end. This idea is especially haunting when you learn exactly what Michael did to his young schoolmate. An autopsy done on the victim's body revealed that in addition to his throat being slit, Jaime was stabbed an additional 40 times in the neck. Did Jamie say or do anything? Did he put up a struggle? Yes, he did. He turned around after I did that. He asked me not to kill him. So I told him, okay, I'm not going to if you cooperate. Okay. Which was a lie. Right. And so I realized that the stall door was open, so I locked it. Yes. And then I turned him around again and proceeded to stab him. And where did you stab him, Mike? I'm, I'm not positively sure, but I'm guessing around the jugular vein right around here. Okay. That's what I was aiming for. Did you stab him anywhere else on his body? Just basically the back of the neck, all through the neck. Okay. And once in the temple, and I think I sliced him here. And that would be on the left side of his face? Yes, the left side of the face. Now, after you did that, mm -hmm. what happened? I left, I took my gloves off, and I flushed them down the toilet. Okay. Okay. I left, and I went to go clean myself off. People were coming in, and so I left that bathroom and went to the other one downstairs. Okay, let me stop you here. Um, after you stabbed him, um, did... Jamie fall to the commode or to the toilet? Um, no, he did not. He was already positioned. At, he was already positioned where he was found. I put his head under there to stop him from gasping for air. Okay. So we'll close it up. And oh, I see. Okay, now. I'm sorry? So he would stop making noise. Okay. Now, how did you know he was dead? I made sure by taking my knife, the point of my knife, and poking him in the face. All right. And I checked his eyes also, and they were motionless. Okay. Now, when he fell, was he on his front, or was he on his side, or on his back? Do you remember? He was on his front. Okay. Face that some, a kind of diagonal thing. Yes. There was blood coming from his mouth mm -hmm. to the right of the toilet, and I guess there might have been blood in the toilet. Okay. And there was blood on the walls. All right. What did you do with the the knife and the jacket? I put the knife, the knife was broken because of the stab wounds and I couldn't close it back. So I closed it as much as I could and I put it in my jacket pocket. Okay. I proceeded to go to the sink and I wiped some of the blood off the jacket, took the jacket off. No, I did not. Take the jacket off. Oh. I did not take the jacket off at that point. I just wet it to get the blood off. Okay. I proceeded to go downstairs to the other bathroom on the first floor. I then wiped myself off with my all the stuff off my face and the stuff off my jacket. Then I took the jacket off and put it in my book. Now you said that you had flushed some gloves yes. down the toilet. There were two. I flushed two gloves. Two gloves. How many pair of gloves did you have? I had two pair. Four gloves and all. Where did you keep the other pair of gloves? In the jacket pocket where I kept the knife. All right. Now, before you gloved up this morning in the bathroom, 
Did you remove any of your jewelry? I removed my rings because they would have cut through the latex glove. Okay. Did anything unusual or did you notice anything unusual when you put your hand in your jacket pocket after the incident? Yes. One of my rings was missing. And which ring was that? It was the ring on my right ring finger. So, what did you do? I went back upstairs to find the ring. There was a witness there saying that someone was in that stall. The way Michael refers to a witness is an indication that he may have strategically and specifically planned the entire murder, considering the possibility of witnesses being present or interfering in some way. I went to go look, having known what was there. And I saw my ring and picked it up and then left. Okay. Had you gone up there actually to check to see if uh, Jamie was okay? No, I'm not, no, I did not. It was strictly to check on your my ring. My ring, yes. And and why did you want to recover your ring? Because I, I value my jewelry. Okay. It is very interesting to note how much more Michael's ring meant to him than his dying friend. This detail speaks volumes about exactly how Michael's mind works. Do people know that you wear that type of yes. ring? Yes, there many people know I wear these type of, this type of jewelry. Could someone have identified you because of the lost ring? Yes, they could have identified this ring, definitely. Okay. When you went back upstairs to go back or into the bathroom to look mm -hmm. for your ring, yes. who is the individual that told you someone was in the stall? Um, I'm not sure of his name. Had you had planned to do this to Jamie? Yes, I yes I did. How long have you had this plan? A little under a week. And is there any specific reason why you planned this? No, there's not. Why did you choose Jamie, your friend? Um, he would he was the easiest out of anybody because he would have followed me because we're such good friends. And I knew he would have followed me in there and done what I would have said. Okay. Now I asked you about an individual named Andre Martin. Yes. Do you know Andre? Yes, I do. How old is Andre? He is 13. What grade is Andre in? He is in eighth grade. Um, is he a friend of yours? Yes, he is. Is he in any of your classes? No, he's not. And how long have you known Andre? I have known him since about the fourth or fifth grade. And I know you told me earlier that usually you and Andre and Jamie hang out yes, at the, the, our, the parking lot fence. At the fence, correct. Um, calling your attention to yesterday, Monday, your yeah. birthday. My birthday. Did there come a time when you approached Andre with the same type of ruse? Yeah, yes, there was. We were, me, Andre, Jamie, and myself were in the bathroom. Which bathroom? We were in the bath, there, we were in the other bathroom than where the victim was found today. What were your intentions yesterday? My intentions yesterday were to kill Andre, um, the same way that I, I would kill Jamie today, except for the fact that I was going to stab him in the back and stab here, and that would have been it. Who was this you were going to do it to? I was going to do this to Andre. Earlier you told me um, that you had a belt and you were going to strangle someone. Yes, I was going to strangle him first. And then after he was dead, I was going to make sure by stabbing him. Okay, and this was Andre. This was Andre. Now, did you lure him into the bathroom yesterday? Into the bathroom, yes, not the stall. Okay, and how did you accomplish that? The bathroom? Yes. We were late to class. I told I told them both that we were going to be late to class. And so we and so we snuck upstairs after the late bell had rung. We got to the bathroom and I was trying to convince Andre to go into the stall. Okay. And what how were you going to do that? I was I told him that I had something to show him. Okay. Yes. And what was his response to that? His response, his response, he didn't want to do it, so he said no. He's like, why can't Jamie go first? My, my, my response then was that he's going to go next. Okay. Now, did Jamie agree? Did Jamie say, I'll come in, I'll look? Yes, he did. Okay. 
And what did you say at that? Point? I said, no, he's going to go first. Okay. And any particular reason why? I wanted to get Andre killed first okay. before I got him. All right. Now, when that did not happen yesterday, what did you end up telling Andre and uh, Jamie? Michael is taking up a lot of space on the table with his arms and hands. This could be indicative of confidence and feeling in control of the conversation, or at the very least, feeling at an equal level as the detective. I said, all right, just, and I said, just, okay, are you going to guys cooperate tomorrow? They're like, yeah, okay, we'll cooperate tomorrow. All right. Michael's word choice here says a lot about his relationship with his friends at school. When Andre refuses to go into the stall with him the day prior, Michael asks his friends if, in his own words, they'll cooperate with him the next day, instead to which they both agree. The way he speaks to his friends indicates that Michael was likely the authority figure in his friend group, and that his friends regularly felt like they had to obey him. That might explain why he thought he could easily lure them both to a horrific fate. Sadly, Michael was right about Jaime, but clearly underestimated Andre. Today, before this happened to Jamie, what were your intentions going to be if Andre should have shown up? I would have talked him into coming to the bathroom with me, coming into the stall. Then I would have proceeded to slit his throat and stab him continuously until he died in the neck area. Yes. And then I would have left him there. Yes. And gone back downstairs and talked, to, talked Jamie into coming upstairs, lured him into the other bathroom and slit his throat and stab him in the neck. Okay. Now... Mike, where did you get this knife from? I have a knife collection. Uh -huh. I've been collecting knives, and as I said, my dad has a store. And so he's, um, I asked him for some knives. This was before I was going to do this. Yes. And I asked him for some knives. He's like, all right, you can take them. Because I wanted a switch, not a switch, but like a knife that can come out. I think they call them gravity knives. Michael had exhibited several warning signs of concerning behavior prior to the murder, most of which detectives won't discover until they speak with more of Michael's schoolmates over the next few days. <laughs> Students reported that Michael demonstrated an intense interest in all things gore and death. Even the screensaver on his computer at school featured a scary creature covered in blood, which had caught the attention of other classmates. Michael also had a history of teasing and physically assaulting his peers. He'd been reprimanded in the past for mocking and hitting a couple of female classmates. He was also known to poke and chase other kids with a screwdriver that he kept in his backpack. Let me ask you this. Um, is there any particular reason why you did this to Jamie? No, there's not. Did he offend you in any way? No, he did not. Did he harm you in any way? No, he did not. Mike, you know the difference between right and wrong, correct? Yes, I do. Do you think what you did is right or wrong? No, I don't. Well, what don't you think? I think it is neither right, but I don't think it was wrong. Do you know what you did is wrong? Yes, I do. Okay. The fact that Michael is saying that he doesn't think what he did was right or wrong shows us that he must have come up with his own explanation or justification for what he did. Had the detective probed further, we may have gotten more information about why Michael believes that killing Jaime wasn't necessarily wrong. This could have possibly revealed some delusional thinking. Michael said himself that Jaime didn't do anything to him. So for Michael to believe that what he did wasn't wrong means that he likely has some type of unconventional belief about taking someone else's life. Is this the first time that you have been involved in something like this, Michael? Yes, it is. Are you sorry that this happened today? No, I'm not. And this was an unprovoked attack on Jamie? Yes, it was. Okay. Sir, has everything you told me been true and correct to the best of your knowledge? Yes, it has. has I, have I forced you to give this statement, sir? No, you have not. Have I treated you gentlemanly? Mm -hmm. Yes, you have. Thank you, sir. I have no further questions. Okay. Following his interrogation, Michael was transported to the Juvenile Assessment Center. He stood trial four years later pleading not guilty by reason of insanity. 
At his trial, a particularly startling piece of evidence was brought forth, a notebook of Michael's that contained information about famous serial killers, a list of people he planned to kill, including his older sister, and a mission statement that declared his need to cleanse the planet by murdering people. Needless to say, the jury took no pity on him. On September 24, 2008, Michael Hernandez was found guilty of the first-degree murder of Jaime Goff and the attempted first-degree murder of Andre Martin. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, plus 30 years for the attempted murder charge.